Right, how are we all doing? It's turned into one of those nights where nothing's gone right. And um, come in, I said what we do is we try and localise one fault. We have a couple of faults going on with this uh, bush set. But um, I said we get the line hold right first because then we can see what's going on from there. So my idea was that we change one component at a time around the line hold. Well, test. And what I find is with these bush is the resistors are always way out of value. They go sky high, especially like the 680Ks, the 270K, the 6, the 470Ks. They just... Anyway, so we check the 680K in um, the line hold, just coming off the line hold control. And it was reading 1.7 meg, so we replaced that. I said, because we had the set going yesterday for quite a while, that the electrolytics are probably alright, so I just plugged it in and it blew the fuse. So I thought, mm. So, I'll bring you in for a look. Um, snipped the snubber cap, went again, fuse blew, checked the diodes. Fuse blue. Then I thought, um, check the electrolytics. Couldn't find any that were short. So I thought, well, if I power it up on the Verdiac, you know, leave it about 50 volts, I might see where the voltage is disappearing, you know, or see a resistor overheating or whatever. And, um, you know, be able to go from there. But I kept winding it up and the feckin' thing come on. So I don't know what the crack is. So anyway. Then the, the video got all messed up and I hit the wrong button and uh, it stopped and it went off into the ether. So I'm starting again. Anyway, here is our uh, supposedly 680k resistor. And you can see there. Yeah, 1.7 meg. So that, so we changed that. We put in a one of those nice blue cheap uh, 680k resistors, and we partied on. So that's the story so far. I want to thank uh, everyone for leaving lovely comments on the last video, by the way. Uh, Ryan Murphy and uh, he reckons I'm better than the standards. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. ZX ZX always has good comments and. Uh, yeah, I hope you're keeping well there. I remember you. I remember you told me the name of the town you live in, but it's gone out of my mind. Us there now, but um, you said there hadn't been any uh, too much uh, problems there so far. So I hope that's still the case. Andrew, welcome aboard. Thanks for for coming in, by the way, and uh, you're very welcome here. Um, Edgar down in Portugal. Um, put that back over there so you can see what I'm talking to you. Edgar in Portugal, nice to, nice to have you on board, I don't know what you're saying but uh, the wife puts it into Google Translate and then I know what you're saying, so uh, thanks for watching the videos, I don't know how you understand me but maybe you've got good English as well, I don't know, and uh, Gavin Stapleton, you were always there with a, a good comment too, George Donaldson down in Athlone, I hope you're keeping well George, um, we won't be getting there a point anytime soon, <laughs> And um, Glenn Z, thank you, thank you for commenting as well. I must watch a few more of your videos. I was watching your stuff ages ago, but uh, I haven't. Uh, Glenn Z does uh, TV stuff as well. So if if you want, if you're interested in that, check out Glenn Z as well. Uh, Chris, all the gear, no idea. Check out Chris's channel. Very interesting. He's working on um, on a trio nine R whatever they are, and he's having a bit of trouble with the local oscillator. So I'll. Uh, um, have to see does he get to the bottom of that i'm sure he will he's very good so that's the story and uh, jimbo jimbo triple a uh who had he, he was in the tv trade he says i'm bringing back memories so i hope they're not all nightmares but uh, that's the crack anyway enough waffling we'll wind this thing up again slowly i'm hoping that you know maybe the electrolyte will settle down if it doesn't maybe i'll stick a nail in and you know, see which one blows up. Anyway. We'll, uh, we'll see what effect our uh, resistor has had. So, um, the uh, 
the fluke there is mo just monitoring the HT. So I can see if it does that and um, does that it shouldn't. I'm just moving it up slowly and see what happens. By the way, um these these bush sets, how you tell the difference between a, an Irish one and an English one? And it was over on the UK Vintage Radio Forum. Um, I never noticed it. Uh, Welsh Anorak pointed this out. That's his forum name. And um, I think Glenn is, he, Glenn, Glenn is his name. He's in Wales. Um, the Irish sets have no silt screen printing component uh, references on the IF panel. So you see here in this panel you see all the, the different numbers for the component references. The Irish ones don't have it on the IF panel. So I don't know if these panels were made in Ireland. And uh, they, I don't know, they just didn't have the, the jig for doing the, the, the printing here or whatever. But that's how you tell the difference if you have an Irish made set or an English one. So there you go. A bit of useless information for you. About 190, I'd say, input. I can't read it. The scale of this uh, Verdiac, by the way, this Verdiac is um, calibrated for 220 volt input. Of course, we're, we're well, in the shed here, it's about 245 anyway. So um, the scale isn't quite right. It's, um, it's a bit higher than what it indicates in the scale. So it goes up to 260 on a 220 input. But I think this one I'll go up to about 280, 290 on our input here. So it's just something to watch. That's why they put a, a multimeter on the uh, input side. Just take the line oscillator starting there. So I'll crack it up another bit now. So we're probably about the 240 there with the, the pointer sitting at 220. Let's see what she'll do now. We have something. We have a test card, boys and girls. There is test card C with a big home bar running up through it. That's not bad. Considering. Ah! The line hole was just hard over. Gone. We're getting somewhere. Right. We'll check another resistor. And we'll keep going. Alright. So, plug came out. Goodbye. Let's check the one on the far side. Which is... Let me see now. I have the book for this. But I don't have it to hand, like most things here. Where's that far 70k go? No. There's a 33k there. Let's see what that is. Reading. Multimeters, multimeters. There's more multimeters and sensors. I'll never put my, my hand on one when I want it. What the problem with this one is compared to the older ones? It has a curved, kind of a little curve in the plastic, and it's very bad for reflections on the camera. Anyway, not to worry, lads. Mm, that's across something, so we'd have to lift one leg of it to get a good look at it. Which we can do.
Do 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 do. Wake up, Sergeant Art. Shiny finger time. What's that say, Chris? Hold on. Ah. What did I say it was? 33k, yeah? 48. Alright, well, we'll change him as well. He wouldn't be helping the matter. See you much later when I find one. Okay, much time later. And uh, we have our 33k just in. So we'll go again. See, are we any better this time? And again, I'll slowly wind it up because I only want to deal with one problem at a time here. Right, let's see what happens now. Just have a look at our little friend here, uh, our 33k resistor which I took out. See what he reads out a Sega. 48k. Getting there, yeah. Come on, almost. But no cigar. And six to five line, I think, so the things isn't too happy either. Right, onwards and upwards. Bye bye. Hmm. I wonder what another PCF80 help.
Just as a matter of interest, let's try another PCF8. Before I go with uh, changing every cap and the uh, resistor in the set. Okay, I have another PCF80 in it, so we're gonna see if it makes any difference just for the crack. That's the one that was in the set. Ha! Now I bet you, if I go anywhere near that line hole control, it'll go. So I'm not gonna touch it till we get a bit of a good look at the picture. She has potential. No, is in this one. Yeah. That's not bad, it looks better on the camera than it does, it's a little bit, but it's plenty of life in that shape for sure. Absolutely. I'm after getting away with mortar again. Well, it makes up for the Phillips, doesn't it? Yeah. It has the makings of a good set. Now let's go near the line hole control. Now that we've seen what we're into. Actually, I'll just... I wonder will the linearity come up a bit better if I start messing with it? Probably not because all the resistors around them are going to be way out as well. Yeah. That's not bad. It's not bad. But we'll do all the resistors so you know that the, the pots are sort of in their midway positions. Yeah, right, now I'm getting brave. I'm going to go with the line hold. Ah, just, just. It's at the end of his travel but it's locking now. But um, we'll have a look at a few more resistors than that. So, it certainly has uh, potential. Uh, I think it'll knock the area. There, going into it. Alright, boys and girls, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to put the video up now when I go in. It's a quarter past 11 here. I'm a bit tired, but um, we've gotten somewhere. Um, we need to find out why it's blowing the fuse uh, when you just plug it in. I'd say the one of the electrolytics is just acting the maggot. It's alright if you wind it up slowly, but if you give her the... She goes. So, finally, that's going to be a bit of crack. Um, we'll stick a nail across the fuse holder and see which one blows up. That's usually good for a laugh. Alright, I'll leave it at that for now. Take care and all the best. Talk to you again soon. Good luck for now.